oh, Friday morning, dogs rising for the big stretch. Is my coffee done? You're listening to In the NoCo, a daily slice of Northern Colorado news and happenings. It's Friday, April 26th. I'm Erin O'Toole. And there's a reason I kick things off today with a haiku. We're closing out the week with a celebration of National Poetry Month. Now, we put a call out to our listeners at the beginning of April for submissions of eight-word poems, and lots of you responded. We'll hear a few of them in this episode. For me, as someone who loves the written word, but who clearly still finds poetry a bit of a mystery, I decided to track down someone who has dedicated his life to bringing poetry to northern Colorado. So I headed over to Wolverine Farm Public House in the River District of Fort Collins. It's a unique and creative space with a co-working office, a lively coffee shop, a volunteer-run bookstore, and a couple of comfy sort of hidden nooks. Well, uh, welcome to our poetry room. Probably the best room in Fort Collins, full of just books of poetry. A um, couple, couple thousand books of poetry. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely my favorite room. Yep, you heard that right. There is a whole room here where the walls are lined with volumes of poetry and one comfy chair to sit and read in. And that voice you heard is Wolverine Farm's founder and director, Todd Simmons. In 2002, he left his day job as a social scientist with the National Park Service and moved to Fort Collins with the intention to focus full-time on writing and poetry. I um, went to... Uh, school at the University of Kansas for environmental science, Uh, graduated, uh, quickly uh, got out in the field with uh, National Park Service, Forest Service, um, really getting into the conservation world. And a couple years into that, found out that I don't fit that well in the bureaucratic machine, and I jettisoned myself into the world of literature. And just the fact that you left one career to start a career in writing and literature and and poetry tells me that this is something that you hold very dear. Could you talk about the importance of the arts in our lives and poetry in particular? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, the literary arts uh, have a super rich history, uh, creative expression, and the ability to communicate and give voice is something that you know people are innately um, drawn to do, and as for myself, you know I've always worked out you know bouts of depression or bouts of feeling insignificant or unsure of myself. I've always worked out moments of doubt through writing and through um, giving voice to uh, my thoughts and emotions, and it's a healthy practice. It's something that you know a lot of people are drawn to do, but then they're scared of of maybe taking it to the next level or scared of criticism and anytime that you're able to get out work out some of the voices in your head or some of the demons in your head um, through any creative act it's such a a release and and such a, a, a welcome relief that it's really important and it means a lot even if it never never reaches an audience um, and the audience is a whole other thing you know the creative uh, the, the generative part of writing um, is enough for some folks and uh, they do it for its own rewards uh, but then to push it forward into a public sphere uh, takes a lot of courage and you learn a lot about yourself and your own writing um, by sharing it with others and being open and being vulnerable uh, I remember my first poetry reading uh, was shortly after I moved to Fort Collins in 2002, and I was terrified. I mean, I could barely hold the paper in my hand to read, mm. but I got through it, you know, and it wasn't awful, and I did another one and another one, and I, you know, I gradually became to enjoy uh, the performance part of literature and poetry, but I still much prefer just the writing itself. Yeah. yeah. A lot of the submissions that we received are kind of centered around environmental themes or they talk about nature, um, which I I think makes sense in terms of beauty. We expect poetry to kind of expound upon something that is beautiful. Catkins dangle, swing themselves free, await the greening. Unsheltered car, your windshield grace with crystal artwork. But I think it's interesting, too, to talk about 
nature being endangered from threats of climate change? Uh, I mean, poetry is sort of a, a special beast in the world of literature. I mean, it often strips away everything that isn't necessary, and it distills everything down in, into sometimes just a few words. And I think um, that really speaks to us ancestrally, and it speaks to us on uh, a lot of different levels that science can't really touch. I think poetry um, married with science often is extremely beneficial to, to do. Uh, we recently, in the last few years, published uh, a book of poems where the poets uh, had to use scientific papers and distill the scientific papers down into poems. And it really sheds a whole new light on the data and how science can manipulate the world. And, you know, poetry is a manipulation of the world in itself. And so it's, it's a really distilled version of what we experience. Kind of a different way to get at the data, I guess. Yeah, I think it just reaches us on a, you know, a level that we can't quite articulate, but we know that it means something um, important. So we also had a lot of young people submit their own poems, which is great. Eight words is all we can possibly say. Life, so interesting, so vast, slowly being destroyed. I'm wondering your thoughts on the importance of younger people learning about poetry, learning to enjoy and appreciate poetry. Oh, it's invaluable. I mean, I think poetry should definitely be a huge part of any child's education. And, you know, I think a lot of adults who don't read poetry is probably because they're scared of it and never quite learned how to appreciate it. You know, with any literature, it's always about timing. And when you come into contact with the work, you know, the sooner we can get books of poems into kids' hands and, and get them to appreciate how that style of literature works, you know, the better for all humanity. That was Todd Simmons, the founder and director of Wolverine Farm Publishing. On our way out today, we wanted to share one more poetry submission that really stuck with us. Hi guys, this is David Hume from Larimer County Jail. Tragically hopeful, ignite the wick, lie in repose. We appreciate David for sharing that poem with us. Earlier in the episode, we heard from Virginia Schultz from Gold Hill and Beth Chilson of Fort Collins, and from Catherine and Wyatt, both students at Rivendell School in Fort Collins. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted a poem to help us commemorate National Poetry Month. You can read and listen to more poems and see photos of Wolverine Farm at our website, KUNC.org. And if you didn't get a chance to submit your own poem, please feel free to do so. You can email us at noco at kunc.org. That is it for us today here on In the NOCO. We'll be back next week with more of what's happening in Northern Colorado. Ariel Lavery is our producer. I'm your host, Erin O'Toole. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great weekend.